Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Erwin. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Carlos, welcome to the podcast. Tell us more about your life story from the from a young age growing up and to where you are right now. Okay, well, so so I was uh, born in in Madrid, uh, and uh, from the very beginning, uh, I was linked with uh, with football and also basketball, uh, and in particular with with Real Madrid. So, my father, who became a member of Real Madrid in nineteen seventies. Uh, when he came to study to 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 the city to in university with his uh, colleagues at uni, they decided to to become members of of Real Madrid. And so, from the very beginning of my life, I, I was four, very early nineties, uh, when my father started taking me to Bernabeu Bernabeu Stadium uh, with his friends. Uh, and it still happens today. So today, my father is still going to to the stadium with his uh, uh, former university colleagues. All of them already retired, and and yeah, I have I have I have the chance also to to enjoy enjoy the game with with them still still today. So I guess uh, my my life my life uh, passed in Madrid uh, like another kid uh, having idols playing football in in the school. Uh, I played uh, uh, um, uh, when I was in the school in the in the school team in the, during the weekends and, and so on. Also, also in basketball in in Madrid, also there is a big culture for for basketball. We also have. Real Madrid is the club with more uh, European cups uh, in basketball, in, in, and but yeah, with with my idols in the nineties, uh, you might not remember, but the strongest league, at least to me, was Calcio in Italy. So I I, I enjoy playing as as, as a defend, defender. So I, I I tend to look a lot into players like uh, Mihailovic or Nesta in, in Lazio, Paolo Montero in Juventus, Maldini in Milan. Durham in Parma, so so yeah, and uh, sometimes I also uh, like to play as goalkeeper, and uh, I was looking a lot into again into Italy, uh, into Perucci in Juventus uh, or Pagliuca in Inter, no? so it was uh, at the time the, the strongest league, probably what is today maybe Premier League, no, and 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 all, all the attention of, of kids were more into into that direction, apart from the local the local leagues, obviously, no, so. Uh, yeah, as I grow, I decided to study uh, a master's degree in mechanical engineering. And once I finished, it was in the middle of the financial crisis uh, in, in, in Europe and very strong crisis in Spain in 2010. Uh, I always say that when there is a, a problems or, or crises, there is opportunities. You know, and uh, uh, the best opportunities come. So I decided uh, to to move to the UK and started uh, developing my, my career in the auto industry in, in the UK, which gives me then uh, auto industry have given me the opportunity to work in three different countries, uh, travel around the world and and work for really amazing brands you know, and with amazing people. So so yeah, I guess that that's me. Uh, in the middle of all this, I also started uh, to help uh, uh, and collaborate with small and medium businesses in, in other industries I'm also passionate about, uh, like the sport, uh, also real estate or local food and beverage businesses. And well, also collaborating at the moment with some foundations, uh, as well as mentoring and directing, directing a master degree thesis for engineering and also business of, of students in the in the final year of of, of the uni. You know? So this is a, a something I do in my spare time, let, let's say, and yeah, that that's that's me really. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that uh, your father was a member of Real Madrid. Uh, yeah. Does it work like? Uh, you cannot become a member of Real Madrid if your family member has not been a member before. No, no, or... no, not at all, not at all. Okay, so, okay. so things has changed. No, as, as football is developing, uh, things things are developing also in the in, in the club. So no, uh, anybody uh, can become a member of Real Madrid. At the end, the membership card is uh, is, is uh, you are member of the club. The same as I have to say, I have been member of three clubs. So th- I think this is quite unique. So when I was in the UK, I was member of Everton going to Godison Park. Uh, when I was in Italy, I was member, I was living in Torino, working for Fiat Group. I was member of Torino. 
Okay. Which, uh, at the end, link is very. If you think about it, it's very link with all the industries. You know, I, I was I was working for the group of the owners of Juventus, yeah, uh, Familia Agnelli, uh, but I was member of Torino, the other team of the of of, of the city, and I'm a member of Real Madrid since my early age, you know, since I was four four year old. Uh, so now uh, everybody uh, could become member of 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 Real Madrid uh, still today. Uh, the thing is today uh, is not uh, open. Is not open because there is not more allocated uh, spaces, neither in the stadium, neither. Uh, so at the moment we are plus one hundred thousand members of, of Real Madrid, uh, and with a seat uh, in the stadium, approx forty fifty thousand, and the rest is, is is ticket allocation. At the time in the seventies, and also in the nineties, if you wanted to become member, you go to the stadium in summer. I want to be member of Real Madrid, and you could become member. Uh, now there is queues, queues of ten years waiting list, obviously, and, and obviously now it's uh, becoming very, very difficult uh, to become to become member. So no, there is not a prerequisite uh, to be a member of of Real Madrid. However, now it's uh, it's something that is is close due to the dimension is is, is, is taking football. No, uh, nothing to do with the with the nineties or eighties. Yeah. So tell us more about your time. Um, working and being in Real Madrid, what's the things that's happening in the background that the fans, that the players don't see? Yeah, so uh, my, my experience uh, with, uh, uh, with with Real Madrid is a representative member, okay? So, which is a, uh, a member, let, let me explain a bit this because I think it's something that people doesn't really know and, and to me, this is the uniqueness about Real Madrid, being able to compete and winning, being owned by the members, not having a private uh, owner who inject money uh, from outside football industry. Uh, I think this is this is quite uh, quite unique. You know? uh, uh, a club with a pedigree of Real Madrid, more than 120 years of history, is still today owned by, by us, by the members. Okay. So, uh, so, as you know, Real Madrid is a Spanish club basketball and football club founded in, in 1902 and is still owned by the members who today we are slightly above 100,000 okay, uh, members. So every four years, uh, these members, over 100,000 members, elect their representative members okay, who are going to be the members that represent them in the pre-assembly meetings and the annual general assembly with the current president, club president, and the and the board of directors. Okay, uh, the president today, Mr. Perez, Florentino Perez, and the board of directors uh, are also elected every four years by the members. Okay, so let's say the representative member assembly is kind of the the supreme uh, representative and governing body of the club. No? So as representative members, we approve the management reports, the budget statement the balance sheet, the profit and loss account for the current fiscal tax year. We approve the income and expenses budget uh, and project activities. Uh, just to give you an example, no, the new Bernabeu Stadium needs to be approved by us. Uh, last year in the, in the General Assembly, who usually happens end of the year in, in November, uh, we had to approve an extra expenses uh, in order to, to be able to develop the, the project of the pitch leaving the stadium no and coming back no uh, that was not budget at the beginning so all these things would need to be uh, approved by that and, and and really the president and the board if if they don't get the approval of of the numbers uh, next day they need to go to elections they are out of the club no? and i think and the president and the board of course uh, are also members of the club you need to be president of real madrid you need to be this there, there is a prerequisite. So you need to be a member of Real Madrid for at least uh, 20 years consecutively. Wow. And you need to put... Yeah, and, uh, no, but this is the easy one. This mm -hmm. is the easy one. The, the difficult one is you need to put in a bank account 20% of the current year budget of the club because you are responsible to make a financial hole in the club if you don't manage properly. So that's the really difficult. And also this is a very good filter to make sure that the people who present themselves for president are used to manage this type of amount of money and they were able to generate this amount of, of money in their own companies. But they need to be uh, members of Ramadi for 20 years uh, consecutively. Mm. We are very lucky because we have, an, and you see Florentino Perez for a very long time there, but every four years needs to be elected by, by us. So if someone else goes uh, and there are people who want to, to be present, but 
uh, at the moment uh, with, with Florentino uh, doing things as, as he's doing it uh, 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 is keeping is keeping on going really uh, because it's, it's really challenging and, and you have examples you no know? Barcelona is working for example in the same concept as, as us and we also suffer eh? this is not nothing against against Barcelona at all we we also suffer from these things with previous presidents football uh, uh, has arrived to a dimension that in two bad years of management uh, you create a massive hole and create a crisis in the club financially. And 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 you look at a, at a FC Barcelona at the moment, and they are really struggling. They are really struggling. Yeah. Uh, so so and, and to me, this is the uniqueness as well of Real Madrid. Nobody speaks about it. I, I have in, in in the assemblies I go and I and I talk about it. No, this is our value, really. This is our massive value. Being able uh, to compete with our own resources at the big, highest level in football. I think this is. Amazing, no? And, and yeah, I, I myself I tell this to Florentino. No? We we need to to communicate this better. We are missing marketing here because nowadays you only see big investor groups, uh, uh, no, coming from other industries, uh, USA, uh, uh, UAE, uh, putting money into into the European football uh, uh, in clubs that by themselves they are not sustainable. The salaries they are paying are not sustainable. They are not generating that money by their own. We are doing it. And that's why we need to lead. And and and, and the example of the new Bernabeu Stadium, some you know, a, a new trend that all other clubs are following. We do not have other choice than lead this because if we don't lead this, we stop being the top of of the industry. We are not able to pay to pay to pay those salaries because we, do, we will not generate them. So our 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 Bernabeu Stadium, New Bernabeu Stadium, for example, is is is. is is, is is our tool also to be able to compete, you know, and and um, for for those reasons, I think Real Madrid is very well managed because we don't have other choice. If we are not very well managed as, as an organization, at the end we are an organization of more than four hundred employees. Uh, we will not get the results we have on the pitch. You know? uh, so we need to be in the high performance in the pitch, but also in the offices. Otherwise, uh, we are we are not able to to compete in the in the dimension that football has has entered now. Yeah. Mm, yeah, hundred percent. It's obvious that Real Madrid has the winning mentality. They they want to win every game, every trophy, everything. And do you see this same attitude in the back in the back in the offices? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's a shame that those assemblies, these assemblies are on 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 television. You can find them on G two for those at the end of the years. And uh, it's a shame that they are, they are in Spanish. But you might you might you speak a bit of Spanish. You might you might you might understand it. Uh, they have the representative members uh, challenging, uh, but sometimes it's not even needed challenging because you see how uh, people like Florentino Perez or jo Jose Angel Sanchez, the GM of Real Madrid, work. It's not that they work hard; they are they are so talented people. We we have the high performance also in the in the in the in in the teams in the offices, you no? Know? And and uh, we always are, are looking for global talent. And, and obviously, the brand itself attract the talent, retain the good talent, and and and, and obviously you see that there. You you really see that there. I mean, uh, every year I think, how can I add value here? How can I push a bit more the the the, the club? You know, I have been pushing a lot in the last years myself uh, on sustainability. You know, my proposals are around, and, and I know the club now is working on that. Uh, and this is an example. We need to be the the sport club more sustainable in the in the world. And what does it mean? That means not only be neutral in carbon neutral, but also generate and balance other clubs' emissions by our negative impact. And we need to be the best one on this, the same as we are on on, on the pitch. You no, know? and and and, uh, and after that, for example, Real Madrid is working with BMW. Now the fleet of cars in the club for the players are all EVs, all electrical. They are working with Deloitte to give you another example on sustainable actions, and all that is coming from from representative member. No, that and, and I'm feeling that that you are here and, and and you challenge the club and 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 the people in the club that at the end are other members that are president and are in the board, challenging the the organization and making sure they are looking after what is our our baby. It's it's amazing, no? And yeah, I can tell you every time you try to add value and push, and, and you find difficult because things are done very very well. No, the, the people we have is is really talented. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely, and you need them at the end. Organization, not only in football, in any industry, is a uh, people, processes, and tools. 
but people and processes that as an organization and you have inputs to create value being very efficient work productivity and you give an output you know? that that's the value that your organization regardless what uh, what uh, what business it is regardless what industry it is um, that that's what is behind a brand people and processes yeah? and the processes are put by people so release people at, at the end everything is ultimately ends on on the people so you have those results uh, actually, sometimes I think it's more difficult. Uh, uh, I, I really think that I think it's more difficult to have a sustainable club nowadays, paying those salaries and those costs that you have than winning a Champions League. Really, so I think what they are doing behind behind the scenes, mm. uh, without them, will not be possible. You will not be able to bring the best players to play for the club with, without them. Yeah, because it's like a membership-driven uh, type of club. It must have had a big impact on the club with the coronavirus lockdown and stuff like that. How did the club manage to get them? Because the club is based on revenue because it's a big stadium. So how did the club manage to get absolutely. through that and get past that? Yeah, absolutely. I do not, in general, I do not like to leave things on lax, you know, to be, let's be lucky. If we are lucky, we will be okay. If not, uh, no, I think we like, uh, and I like personally to, to have everything under control or try to have contingency plans if something bad happened. But they have to say, we have been very, very uh, lucky on, on in terms of timings. Why? Because uh, COVID came at the moment in which we were working on the new stadium. So we will not be able to play games uh, in the new stadium during a period of time. And we will have to play them in our training pitch. You know, it's a, a Di Stefano stadium that is a stadium with a small, very small capacity. But we could afford to, uh, to to play in the games there while we speed up the, the works in the, in the stadium. But COVID came and public you know, could not go to the stadium. Everything was, was, was closed. Uh, and I don't know if you remember those games in that uh, Champions League uh, that the final the final was in Lisbon. No, it was a different format because of COVID. During those games in Madrid, uh, we were playing in our 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 training stadium. Uh, uh, so we had the chance to to speed up the the works in the stadium so that when public could come back to the, to the stands, we were in a much better position. So all that in, in our case was planned. We already had in plan that uh, we will have to close the stadium. So all that area in terms of ticketing, we will, we will not have it. It's, 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 it's all about planification and, and, and contingency plans when things are not going as, as, as you want to go. Real Madrid has suffered from, from COVID. Uh, obviously, that, that last year was the, the year in which, again, we give... Um, Better, uh, better result than the year just before starting COVID. So we have a decrease on on the revenues uh, in terms of ticketing, in terms of obviously all the sponsorship, everything in the in the in the industry uh, de decrease. Uh, the, the, the COVID affected everybody. Uh, but now we are back. We are back on track. And, and but actually, in the, in with the contingencies, financial plans that that we had. Uh, and if you look at the numbers, and we public those those numbers, being being the club uh, from you know, from the members, those numbers are are, are public. Uh, you can see as the total revenue decreased, but but we were keeping the 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 cost under control, and and the net was always giving giving positive. We also we have to say we ask our players and we ask our our uh, all directors in the organization of the club. Uh, to reduce their salaries during two years, and uh, and they put the, the, their bid, they they reduce. They had a, a pay cut during two years, the strongest years of of COVID, where we were more penalized. And also that helps. That helps. That at the end we we end up the years with a net balance of, it wasn't zero, but it was like a, I don't know, a significant insignificant amount positive, but. You can say net zero with with no loss, and uh, not many clubs uh, afford that. Uh, there are numbers there, and not, not many clubs. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know if it was only us and us and another club who were able to to do not give a uh, negative ne negative uh, uh, results during those two years. But even with COVID, we were able to give. Uh, uh, slightly positive positive results, but with extraordinary it was extraordinary time, extraordinary actions as well. You know? uh, uh, like like yeah, uh, asking our players a, a, a cut off uh, on 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 the salaries and and also to our directors in in, in the club, and all of them all of them accepted. And actually, it was something that in in those uh, assemblies, uh, representative member assemblies, 
I I mentioned and I thank you know, they were virtual for first time uh, those those uh, during those years the, the assemblies uh, and yeah uh, I can I can send you some some videos because they are there in 19, 2019 2020 uh, I I thank the, the the players and the directors of the club for for the effort they they made here. yeah This episode is sponsored by Craft Magic Gallery What's Craft Magic Gallery is the merchandise of Bergman Art And what's Bergman Art? Bergman Art is an online gallery where Patrick, the co-host of Play by Play podcast, enables people to buy the outstanding paintings by his grandfather. Like this one. Go to sigurbergman.com and enjoy the show. Now, let's go back to the episode. In my football career, uh, where I comp- when I compare somebody good to great, usually it's the standards they put each other to put on themselves, yeah? So uh, mm. you have been a member of Real Madrid, that is obviously on the top, but then it's Everton and Torino. And my question to you is, uh, what's the difference between uh, those smaller clubs and the biggest one in the world? Is it also the standards? Well, uh, I don't know that well Torino and 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 uh, and uh, Everton. So as, as a member, I mean, uh, getting also the the membership card to go to the to the to the stadium to watch okay. the game more more kind of a, of a fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, as but but the, the main difference is that they have owners. They have owners. So Torino has an owner, private owner. So the club is from an owner. It's not from the from the mm-hmm. fans. That club is not. And Everton the same. They have an owner, and and the and is the one taking the decisions and is the one. I mean, If I give profit, I can get that profit and put it in my pocket. If I lose money, I top up with my own money. It's their own risk, and the the, the fans they don't have any uh, any any choice. Uh, there are clubs with members that they seem very happy, like Newcastle fans lately, lately no, because they have a, a new owner and is putting a, a lot of money. Uh, but that's not that's not football to me. Uh, football is uh, being able, no, with your b- brain power of your members. Mm-hmm. The president, our president, is member of Real Madrid. The board are members of Real Madrid for more than 20 years consecutively, at least. Otherwise, they will not be able to be there. We vote all the members, all the fans. We vote every four years. Uh, the members and the fans elected their representative, like it's my, my privilege now, to go and approve or reject the numbers of the club every year, every single year, and speak face to face with the president on the decisions on everything. So. To me, this is the uniqueness of of, of this class that, that, that we are able to have a say, you no? Know? And you see, Man United always complain about the owners. You have different stories, no? You have a very Man City now is very happy, but uh, tomorrow, if they decided to do something else, they, well, they will be unhappy. Uh, and 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 also, it's, it's unfair competition, really. It's really unfair competition uh, because you are bringing uh, money from somewhere else uh, with uh, with a questionable fair play uh, no rules. No, now Everton has been affected by by this. They lost points this this year on, on the fair play. Yeah. I think, but I think it needs to be more transparent. I don't know why one club is affected, one club is not is not affected by by that. Uh, um, but coming back to your question, and, and again with a knowing in, inside Everton and Torino, because again they have private owners and. So neither me, neither a, a member of Everton or Torino will 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 know what's going on. I know very well what's going on in Real Madrid. I can say very, very, very easily, very happily. And and if I have some question, I can ask them directly. Right now. No. Plus the meetings we have, informative meeting during the year and the assembly, you no, know, where where we have the power, really. We have the power to 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 change the president and the board. It's as mm-hmm. simple as that. And we are doing all this while being sustainable financially and winning trophies. So, 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 yeah. To to being able to do that uh, in Real Madrid, yeah, and you are right. It's about excellence. It's about the high performance. It's about being obsessed, obsessed to continuous improvement. Yeah, it's it's about that, you know. And 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 actually, you you see that in the pitch and in the in the offices as well, you no? Know? Because and you see the players, you no? Know? You see Jude Bellingham, you no? Know? Uh, it's, it's a player who came this year. We all love him. He he understood Real Madrid better than. Than, than than many players born in Madrid, he understood preferably, and 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 and, and, and he also say, you know, how how Real Madrid takes you from being good or very good. I mean, when you are competing in a professional world, you need to be very good, you no? Know? To the excellence, to the you have just won the Champions League, and 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 you are thinking on the next year Champions League. 
Yeah. The same night, and and this is what what the, what the club, what the coach, what everybody demands. No, uh, Carlo Ancelotti as well has understood perfectly today what, what Real Madrid is. He understands perfectly, and you can tell. You, you can tell in the way when they speak, the values they 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 project to the to to the players, and and so on. So so yeah, absolutely. No, uh, uh, in order in order to to be this successful and being able to do it in the way we do it, uh, it takes you to. Something else, no, and and and, uh, and maybe one player. If you don't have it, uh, the process exit the club, no, make you exit the club, no, because you don't stand that. That you you cannot stand that level uh, for for many many seasons, no. You might arrive so motivated, you give it everything, a second year, but you say. Oof. It's not for everybody. This it no? it's, it's not about having been talented, but so you, you it's, it's, from a mind point of view, you need to be very strong because it's been very demanding and, and really being obsessed with continuous improvement all the time, all the time, all the time. No, uh, and you feel it. Yeah, you feel it in in the office again and and in the pitch, of course. In the pitch, uh, obviously, they they have much more visibility and and uh, the media is behind and 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 uh, yeah, the pressure is higher. But but in the office as well because again without a good job there uh, anything else can happen uh, and, and and you have examples you have examples uh, uh, with with a similar model than than the one we have and that they are really really struggling at the moment. I know I know I know I'm sorry for breaking the podcast just one announcement okay check out our channels on Instagram on TikTok on Facebook play by play podcast a bit of a controversial topic yeah. European Super League, right? Okay, yeah, Super okay. League. What's your, what's your take on it? Okay. Uh, did the fans and the members have any input into this? Yeah, so um, I have to tell you, I'm going to speak now my personal, which might not be very uh, disaligned with the, with the club view. Uh, uh, so uh, the members of Real Madrid fully back up uh, our president on, 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 this, on this project. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of interest and there is a lot of noise around. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna put you an example. Do you know who was the only club involved in the creation of the current UEFA Champions League? The only club involved and signing those documents. And I invite you to visit and do some investigation online. It's gonna be uh, about about that. Who were the the creators of UEFA Champions League and the the UEFA concept we know nowadays? Well, the only club involved was Real Madrid with his president, yeah, San yeah. Santiago Bernabeu. Mm -hmm. uh, it was signed in Paris together with France football. And I tell you, and if you read about it, governments, other clubs were completely against. These guys are crazy. It's competition between clubs in different countries. Real Madrid was leading this. Okay? The same with FIFA. Read about the organization of FIFA, how that was created. So... Real Madrid has been always uh, looking outside of Spain, no? In in terms and and and, and Real Madrid is, is something is 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 passionate about football, okay, and 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 this project uh, and this project has been explaining to me, uh, uh, and that's the problem I think what is happening. This project has not been explained, or people doesn't want to be explained because of interest. I'm gonna give you another example, and, and you arrive to your conclusion. The fans, global fans. The followers who are following are following players and are following clubs. Football is clubs and players. We're in an industry in which every time there is more games, let me say more silly games. I don't even know some some guys that they make no sense. And where is the risk? The risk is in players injures players' lives and class fin class financial situations because you are paying a lot of money to a player that cannot play. If it gets injured, plus you are investing in your stadiums because the games are playing in your stadiums that are massive buildings in your organization, you know, in cities uh, where it's are under your cost, your cost for maintenance. So everything is is kind of all the risks are in players and in clubs, but football is organized by by, by an organization. You know, who who get a, a nice piece of, of, of the cake. And they, to get a more piece of the cake, they put more games and more games and more games, bringing more risk and more risk and more risk to professional careers of football players and professional uh, football clubs. In case of Real Madrid, uh, having a couple 
And this year we had Vinicius, we had Courtois, Courtois for all season, Militao. We are paying a hell of money in salaries for players that cannot play. And why they cannot play? Probably it's going to be affected and it's a, a big impact into the number of games, travels that is having it. So at the end, the concept of, of, of Super Leagues is, well, this is in one side. In the other side, Young, younger generation are losing are losing the interest in football and, and the numbers say that I mean and, and I can see myself I don't remember the last game I see 90 minutes and that is not playing Real Madrid with my full interest on that so so something needs to change in the industry because now football is not not it's not only football it's competing with other with other entertainment industries and and younger generation are going to different industries so we want to keep this sustainable and, and working and being the leader of sport in in the world as, as it has been until now uh, something else something else and it needs, needs needs to be done no and 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 at the end the, the concept and you call it super league call it as, as you wish to call it no uh, is, is is to create it more interest uh, games minutes of 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 the sport that is going to benefit everybody you know? it's, go, it's going to benefit everybody so now i give you an example now uh, also small clubs uh, this is not this is not about this is to save football <laughs> this is not about to 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 to, to gain more money uh, and this is the approach uh, I, I give you an example you have Leicester in the uk uh, if uh, if w with the current concept they play one year Champions League, where are they today? It's not sustainable mm -hmm. for a club yeah. that did great yeah. one year. If you guarantee him that 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 team playing in a third division, let's say of a Super League for five years, you allow that and in a in an in a in an industry that is generating more money because it has more interesting games that we have today and less game but more interesting, you create more more value, more revenue. So that the clubs can be more sustainable and the players playing by playing less, they 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 will spend less time injured. That is what is happening today. And you warranty Leicester to play five years in the in the in the in in, in that super league concept. You let Leicester to 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 make more money. Don't lose the players from one day to another one. That's sustainable for them. They are gonna be able, uh, or they're gonna have more chances than just playing one day, one year uh, Champions League, and then in two seasons they are in, in, they are not in Premier League any, anymore. No, this is an example. No, so what what, what I think is 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 uh, about the Super League that we need to listen to the concept first. No, I, I think there is a lot of interest around, uh, uh, and to don't try even to understand what what is this this concept about. Uh, 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 and then is another another topic that is important as well: the fair play, the financial fair play. I, I mean, I, I think football for the fans. Football is not f of the fans now. Uh, when the Spanish Super Cup is being played in, in in Arabia every year, football is not for the fans mm -hmm. today. And those are the people that are against Super League because they want to keep football for the fans now. Football, Real Madrid is for the fans that I go every year and I can take and be involved in decisions of 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 of, of my club. This is for the fans. For the fans, it's not that every time, uh, I don't know, uh, you put more games in, in Champions League and now they create a new format that nobody understands. Uh, uh, I really do think that uh, there are organizations that, uh, this is personal view, by, by the way, eh? I'm not talking in the name of any, any club here. Eh? It's, it's, it's my, my personal view. I think there are many people interested to not speak about uh, 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 the concept of, of Super League because they will lose the lobby they have. Uh, football is for the fans, it's not of UEFA. And I'm talking about a member of a club who create UEFA Champions League. Football is not of UEFA. Football is of the fans. And 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 what it has been a joke, and, and this is, I'm, I'm very passionate about it, this is what it has been really a joke, is that you do not allow to create your own competition to other private clubs. But what is this? We are in the European Union, we are in Europe. I mean, if Real Madrid decided to create tomorrow with Disneyland, Mickey Mouse Cup, and invite Juventus, Barcelona, Milan, uh, Chelsea... Why the clubs cannot create the Mickey Mouse Cup with Disneyland and create their own games? Who are you mm -hmm. to forgive, to, to don't let private uh, organizations to organize a game? And, and the law and the, the court already has said, UEFA cannot penalize anybody, anybody for creating their own or their own their own competitions. So, and, and that already has been on court and has been has been you know, uh, 
the decision was in favor of of the Super League clubs because. But that was, so it's not of the fans and it's not of the club. Football is yours. No, that that was a bit. No, the, what it has yeah. been said. So I think about the Super League is, is, is something. Something needs to be done. I don't know if it needs to be Super League. It needs to be called whatever it needs to be. Definitely, there are issues in the industry. That is the amount of games, um, the risk that the clubs are having. The football players, I think nobody's looking at the football players. I mean, this is getting crazy. They are playing like two, three games per, per week. Uh, now when they play with the national teams, they travel to the other side of the world to play a, a silly, friendly game to come back then and then play a, a, a big game uh, in, in the in the in, with, with their club. I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming crazy. And, mm -hmm. and then is we have the new generations. They do not stay. I do not stay 90 minutes watching a game if it's not if it's not playing my, my team. Uh, 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 we need to do something about it, or 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 or, or, or the industry is, is becoming very, very, very old. The way football is is being managed today, and 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 and, and every year, every year we lose um, more attraction. I think, and uh, as as a, and, and maybe I'm, we are very sensitive in Real Madrid about this because this means. Uh, negative uh, numbers for the club and not being able. Other clubs maybe because it's coming money from the oil, they inject money and it's okay, we are all happy. No? Uh, uh, nobody, but it's not fair play, financial fair play, and I think that's not competitiveness if we are not competing all with the same cards on the table. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think this is a very serious topic. Uh, it's a lot of noise around, uh, made on purpose for people who is interested in, in, in creating the noise about oh, these guys doesn't care about the fans. Listen, the club that is leading this project is probably the only club that can speak very, very happily and very clear about uh, how they care about the fans because it's the only club that is working in a direction that the club is for their fans forever and, and, and being conscious on the economical decisions and doing things so well so that the fans will never lose... Uh, will never lose uh, uh, the power in the club, no? And maybe also I'm very sensitive about it because uh, every time the every year the football is more devaluated with the current ways of competition. My club is devaluated, and there were as representative, I'm like a shareholders, no? I'm uh, my, my 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 no my 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 shares. Let's call it my shares are losing money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> In other clubs, the rest of the fans in 95% of Europe, they cannot say this, no? And I think this is the most unique about, about Real Madrid. Uh, uh, no, uh, winning Champions League uh, uh, being owned by the by the members, no? It's it's very, very, very inspiring. I think it's a very inspiring story that is not tell. Not, not many people know. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I can tell that you changed my point of view on the Super League, to be honest. Like I was a yeah. little bit, a uh, little bit on the left side. Like, why would we change something that is working? But uh, now I see your point of view and uh, totally understand. And I need to say that we have thirty seconds left before it cuts off. So uh, it's been a pleasure to speak to you, and uh, I hope we can uh, we can do this again. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you very much for having me. I mean, I enjoy it a lot uh, and, uh, and sharing these topics with with people people who who likes uh, as a football. No, at the end, it's a it's something very shared across many many people. It's an amazing yeah. sport, and, and, and we like it. We love it. We are passionate about it. So it was great. I enjoy it, and yeah, looking forward whenever whenever you want to have a chat. Uh, I'm very happy, very happy to do it with you. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.